In this video, we will discuss survey figures. There are methods that a surveyor can use to automate line recreation, such as EP, tree line, TBC, etc., when the survey data is brought into Civil 3D. Survey figures are the line work that is brought into, stored, and managed in the survey database and can then be inserted into any drawing from the database. Figure prefixes are the means by which line work is connected to the appropriate figure style, layer, as well as whether or not the figure should actually be a break line for a surface or possibly a parcel segment. Although they are similar to description keys, figure prefixes are not stored in the drawing, but rather in something called a figure prefix database. The figure prefix database has an extension of .fdb. Navigate to the survey tab, figure prefix database, make sure that the infinite skills is the current database. Let's first look at the interaction between figures and the drawing. Let's go ahead and open up this Proj1 survey database. We'll click open for edit. And as you can see here, we have two import events. If we scroll down, you'll notice there's a figures category. These are all the figures in this survey database. Let's go ahead and insert them into our current file. To do so, simply right click and choose insert into drawing. It'll fit the view. And now we have all the figures from this survey database in our file. Let's also bring in the survey points to see if there's any errors that may have occurred and some figures that may have not been created. We'll go ahead and right click on here on survey points and choose points, insert into drawing. So the points don't forget are using the description keys and the figures are using the figure prefix database defined in here. So let's go ahead and zoom around here at this area that we have. Notice that we have a few points here called driveway paved but no line work is being generated. We have driveway gravel. The driveway paved is not actually being inserted as a figure into the drawing. If we go ahead and select this and go to the properties palette, the raw description for this point, which is coming from the survey database, is DRP. So we do not have a figure prefix in our figure prefix database called DRP. Let's go ahead and create one and watch how we can reimport and reprocess the line work. Right click on Infinite Skills Figure Prefix Database and choose Manage. These columns are completely sortable. And if you look here, this is the Figure Prefix Database Manager. It maps the name, which again is simply the same exact raw code that you would have for a description key. Whether it should be a break line that you might bring into a surface, a lot line, the layer it should go on, the style it should use, and the site if it were to become a parcel of some sort. Here's DRG. This pretty much has the same exact layer that we want to use and all the different settings as well, except we want to use a style called DRP. So we'll go ahead and copy this one by clicking on the copy figure prefix. We'll scroll down to the bottom here and here's DRG. All we have to do is click once in here and type in DRP. Don't forget that the number that was appended to the actual description is a way for you to connect separate figures. Press enter here, resort this change the style that this uses here. We'll go ahead and click the drop down here and we'll go ahead and pick DRP. Within the style, as we discussed before, the layer is also defined. However, it makes sense to actually put the object, the figure, on a layer. That way you can use layer freeze very nicely. We'll go ahead and click OK and we're good to go. Now we need to reprocess the line work. Right click on this import event and choose process line work. Notice how you can pick the prefix database, the Lambert code set, insert figures and survey points. We'll click OK here. It automatically regenerates all the graphics. And now, as you can see, we now have our line work in there automatically. However, there's a problem here. If we look, we have two figures. Well, it turns out that this figure here should actually be one figure. It was a mistake by the surveyors. We're going to go ahead and fix it right now to make one figure altogether. We'll go ahead and pick this one here first. Notice that when you pick a figure, you get the contextual ribbon to edit the figure. We'll go ahead and click on Edit Geometry. We'll go ahead and click on the Insert PI command. And notice how as you hover over the different vertices, it just inserts it automatically. I want to get this point here over to this point here. You'll notice it's not actually allowing me to insert from that endpoint. We'll simply click in space. Notice the elevation is telling you it's interpolating the elevation between these two points. We'll just press Enter. Press Escape to end the command. Press escape again, and notice how the figure is still selected. And now let's go ahead and actually grip edit these and look at the coordinates for a second here. When you hover, you'll notice it actually is changing the elevation to 99.7734, which is the elevation of that point. So there goes that vertice. We'll go ahead and pick this grip here, and we'll go ahead and do the same thing, 99.7308. 
And now we have that line. Now you'll notice the other figure is right here. So we want to actually join these. If you look at the Edit Geometry panel, you'll notice that there's a command here called Join. Go ahead and pick it. It's already selected that figure. You need to simply click on this one here. Press Enter. And now you'll notice that all the grips are there, ready to go. Now, just so you know, it has not updated the survey database. Remember, the survey database is a standalone location for all the survey data. So what we need to do is we need to actually browse to the figure and delete the other figure. It's still there. Let's go ahead and select the figure. And in the Modify ribbon, we can actually browse to the survey data. Let's go ahead and click on it. And notice how in the panorama window, you can see that this is DRP2. So what we need to do is delete DRP1. So let's scroll down to our figures collection, right click on DRP1, choose delete, make sure we save this so it actually updates the survey database. And now we are left with this figure here. That said, let's go ahead and navigate to DRP2 in the survey database to see what it looks like when we click on it in the drawing. So it still has DRP2 as that one little segment. So what we need to do is replace the graphic with the survey database. To do that, you simply select the figure and select update survey data from drawing. And you'll notice that now it's highlighting everything, which means the survey figure has been updated. We'll go ahead and simply right click on DRP2 in the survey database and go ahead and choose properties. You'll notice that in the figure properties dialog box, there's actually a really nice option here to change other settings, but you can just simply toggle this to close, click OK, and it'll update in the file immediately. One thing I want to mention is where the figures are stored in the Prospector tab. If you navigate to the Survey category, there's a Figures and Networks option, and of course, here are the actual figures. You can change the style that's being used and so on, but pretty much it's just coming from the Survey database, and it's nice to have a little preview here as well. One last thing to mention. If you were to re-import the original file that this data came from, just realize it'll actually override any of the edits that you've made to the figures in here as well as any other survey data.